What up? Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Drink and Grow Rich Day. This is a cool visual. These are my beers. But yeah, you know what it is. It's Friday. And uh, I sit on Instagram Live, drink some beers, answer questions, and uh, it's fun for me. So hook me up, Jolo, what's up, man? Yo, I, uh, I saw your like, uh, tweeted Kanye or something about like abortion. I agree with, I agree with, uh, I agree with you on that one. What are you saying? Uh, I mean, Joel, Joel is like a little left, Kanye is like a little right, and uh, Kanye tweeted about abortion, and he's so against abortion, and I know, because I went to that event. And Joel said something about like, well, we gotta take care of like the living people, and I'm a pro-choice guy. I see both sides, but um, I'm pro-choice. So yeah, let's kick it right off with the most divisive topic there is. Yeah, abortion. That is the, what's a more divisive topic than ab abortion? I don't think there is one. No. The, the abortion is the most divisive topic that exists. Maybe guns, but abortion is worse. But I like divisive topics because usually I'm in the middle somewhere and it's, and it's fun to just kind of think it through. Because the reason they're divisive is because they're complicated. And when something's complicated, then you got to break it down. You got to think about it. You got to play, listen to other people. So if something was simple, it would just be solved. Like, should people go to jail for murder? What do you think? If someone murders someone, should they go to jail? Yeah. Yes, everyone agrees on that. It's not controversial. <laughs> like, there's no nuance to it. So, yeah. But right, cheers. Let me get a drink with everyone. You wanna shut that fake door? Yeah. So that fan is like. What up, Aaron? Aaron, what's on your mind? What's on your mind today? Jola, uh, what do you think about Kanye overall as, as a as a as a person? Cheers, baby. I just did uh, two podcasts today. Hey, I can hear myself over there. I just did two podcasts today. Uh, one was my show, and I had on this like older guy who's a branding expert named Mike Gaston. And uh, we got in some good ass topics. Dude, did you ever listen to the podcast uh, Dissect? No, I've never heard of it. What's it about? If you want to call in, you can. Um, but I bet you if you listen to it, like there's something cool about it. But I've never listened to it. I don't know, I don't know anything about it. The NBA, that was awesome. They did a whole season dedicated to Kanye. I, just, I actually just spent like 20 minutes breaking down all my thoughts on Kanye on this guy's podcast that I just went on. But basically, he's crazy. I think he needs to pull away from that Kardashian lifestyle a bit. That's a very reasonable thought. I I kind of like it, though. I like the crazy and the chaos and the... And the in the uh, reality TV lifestyle. I think it's fun and entertaining and interesting and I would think I'd be great at living that life, which I'm doing right now, live TV. But uh, for you to say that is very, very practical and true. What's the Battle of Gettysburg inside joke? You mentioned it on your drink of rich. Inside joke with me and who? That's the one. Uh, I guess you don't remember. Oh, oh, I remember now. I remember now. Um, Gettysburg, PA, is where one of our friends in college lives, and we went there for uh, we went there for uh, New Year's Eve, and I got way drunk and got in a fight with Shelby, and like, and then this girl punched me in the face. This girl, Shelby's friend, Katie, and like, it was a really bad night, and then we left the next morning. And like didn't say bye to him, and uh, that and was that's why it's called the battle. Like that was his joke. That was his joke. That was like, and then it was funny because we like our other friends that were with us, we left them there, so they woke up the next morning. And we're like, hey, I don't know where Sean and Shelby are, but like, uh, that's good. So, uh, that is the true battle of Gettysburg. But yeah, 
But uh, also, I had Gary V tweet at me uh, two days ago. One of my favorite people of all time, but not recently. In 20 years from now, what will be stories coming out of Kanye's ranch in Wyoming? Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know why it's got to be 20 years from now. But hopefully... He has like 100 acres. Yeah, he's got a huge... That's awesome. That's one of the things I love about him. That's a great uh, like, real estate investment. But, uh, oh, wow, you think Gary... Wow, someone else thinks Gary is lost, too. Um, anyway, I just hope the Donda album is amazing that comes out, and that's the story from Wyoming. But back to Gary V. I called him out uh, on Twitter a, few, a little bit. And, I mean, I'm just one person. He's a really big, popular guy. But he responded to me, and I think I had a nerve with him. You're... You said Gary's lost. Aaron, in your opinion, why do you think Gary's lost? Because I was just on someone else's podcast and we were talking about this. I was talking with Brandon. I've been talking to a few people. It seems to me like that guy's really fucking lost. And I don't know if it was him being in New York City with the coronavirus. And he likes to be around people. And he's not around people anymore. Because the virus. And he liked to be around his company and having people there. And, and now he's at at his apartment by himself doing tea with Gary Vee, which is a shitty show. And I don't know, maybe his businesses have been affected. Uh, ever since, like, about around when the virus hit, maybe, like, January, February, March, like, ever since this year hit, Gary Vee has been off his game, in my opinion. But one thing we were saying on the last podcast was maybe he is just coming, going to a new audience of 14-year-olds, so he's being really nice and kind, and he's trying to get them when they're young. And, and by the time they're 25, 26, 27, he'll have their trust and then he'll start hitting them like he did with all of us, being a real ass motherfucker. He needs to feed off people's energy, a lot of us do. I need to be people, I need to have people around. That's interesting, like, I don't need that. I don't need to have other people around for me to have energy. Uh, actually, I actually, uh, on a really productive work day, I actually prefer isolation. I mean, it depends. I mean, if it's a creative meeting and something needs to be discussed, then I like to be around people to talk. But when I'm like getting shit done and I'm in my zone and I'm like checking my money and checking my bank and checking my ads and checking my sales, thinking about what are the important things I need to do. Like, I have to be alone. I have to be by myself in isolation. But um, everyone's different. Everyone's different. And... I get that, but uh, also like, but if you're if people around and you need to like prioritize your own day, it's like distracting, you know? And right now at my office, across the lawn, I have the most amazing setup at my office. I have basically my own, I'm right now at my own trailer to myself. It's like 600 square feet or something. My office is over there and the podcast room is right in here. And across the lawn is my 3000 square foot um, production facility where all my employees are. So I have a separation between my office and that office. And I love that isolation. And I'm looking into buying this new 22,000 square foot building. And I'm really excited about it. It would be huge for my business. But one thing I'm concerned about is like the way the offices are set up. It's like around all the other offices. And I won't have as perfect as a setup as I have now. So I'll figure it out. My favorite song from the new Logic album. Yeah, the new Logic album was fucking amazing. Logic is just really good at what he does. He's just uh, good at producing music that sounds good, that feels good, and he's just great at his craft. Uh, but my favorite song was the song Perfect. It was like the shorter song. You know, I think it might be like the growing into be like the single of that album. Um, and one of what's funny about uh, Logic is he doesn't really do like the whole... Kanye thing or whatever with the marketing and the being crazy and the layers of tactics of marketing but he said that he's dropping this album and then he's going to retire Logic said he's going to retire is he really going to retire like or do you think that he said he's going to retire as a marketing strategy to get people to like I think at one point Eminem said he was going to retire I, or, and Jay Z said he was going to retire I feel like if they don't have an immediate plan for a next album in the next year or two, they're like, yeah, I'm going to retire. But Logic's like, how old Logic? Logic's probably like 30, 31, 32. 
so he's gonna retire and then he's gonna be 35 he's gonna be bored as fuck and he's gonna do some other shit with music because that's what he does and that's what he's passionate about so he's not retired he basically was saying that to promote his album yeah <laughs> don't you think yeah. like and that was a much more clearly planned out strategy because like logic says my album's coming out next week and then he tweeted every day like five days six days or like six days five days four days like that's why I think Kanye's probably actually insane because, like, you can tell Logic is a regular human being. Like, he had the strategy of how to market it. He was going to say he's retired, put it out, but, they're like, it all went on schedule. Like, um, he's not retiring. He's just not putting out an album in the next, like, year or two or something. And then he's going to be like, I'm back, baby! I came out of retirement. It's like, dude, you're 31. You're a kid. Like, you're going to keep doing music. But, oh, his album's so good. His album's so good. Marketing move. Yeah, it's a marketing move. Uh, what tattoo would you get if you lost a bet? So I lost a bet and like I had to get a tattoo. Like if someone had a gun to your head almost. You had to get a tattoo. I mean, I would get a freckle on my chest. Right? That's, that's like a, that's a loophole. I, all right. I would get... Um, see, I used to say that I would get like a little basketball like on my ankle or on my hip or something like that, or a shamrock. Cause I used to love basketball and I used to like really be much more like love Notre Dame, like really take, like right now I might get a little like microphone. Maybe like the, maybe like the microphone emoji and then the fire emoji. <laughs> but here's the problem with tattoos. It's like, I'm happy I don't have a basketball and a shamrock now. I mean, I still love basketball and, I, and I'm still like, you know, like Irish shit. But like, that was stuff I was into really then. Right now I'm into like, podcasting so like if you get it it's got to be something that you're committed to forever and that's the reason that what i'd be like scared about about it yeah like if i got a monogram right so say i get a monogram right and then i sell my monogram company and i start a new company then i got this dumbass fucking tattoo like like that really doesn't relate to anything that's going on in my life you know it's like uh you can't get rid of them. So it's, it's, uh, that's why I just don't have any. Although I do respect the people who have, uh, shitload of tattoos because they're all in on being an entertainer. Like, a lot of athletes and musicians have a lot of tattoos. And those people have a lot of eyeballs on them. And who's gonna get more eyeballs? Probably the guy with a lot of crazy tattoos. And I respect that because they are committing their life to being an entertainer. You cannot backtrack. You can't put all those tattoos on your face like a Post Malone and then be like, you know what? I'm actually going to try to get a job at an insurance agency. Like, you can't do it because, I mean, I guess I've never seen an insurance agent without face tattoos. I've never seen a grocery store worker or uh, a clerk at a bank or I've never seen an average uh, labor worker, or a regular person in the economy have tattoos on their face. All the people that have tattoos on their face are entertainers. So, like... Maybe it's because if you go all in like that, you're going to be forced to be successful as an entertainer. So, like, I respect that. Um, I think Justin Bieber's tattoos look so bad, though. That's just a side note. That's just a side note. I think they look... I love Justin Bieber. I think he's handsome. I think he's cool. I, I, I like his personality. And I like the fact that he has some tattoos, but that one on his neck, dude, looks so fucking stupid. And, like, every time I see him, I'm like, oh, yeah, you got those dumb tattoos. Like, cool, man. <sighs> Cheers. <laughs> I have my engagement photos later today. And Shelby told me not to get too drunk. So. Lonely weave just strong. Lonely weave zero. Can I do a handstand? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can walk on my hands for a little bit. Sure. I'll try it. Alright, I'll try it. Let's see. Oh my god, this is gonna end. Alright. Brandon asked if I could do a handstand. Ah! Don't hurt yourself. I can like kinda do it. Yeah. 
he said, yeah, you did well. <laughs> Um, I guess I can't really, that wasn't a handstand. I can't really do a handstand, turns out. I just went on this podcast with, this guy, with that Brad dog. What? That was me doing it. <laughs> and I went on this podcast with this guy Brad dog, who I know from like podcasting early on. And one thing I asked him to do was tear me up and just like, go all out on me. 5.4 out of 10, yeah, not that good. I got a little bit, of, not as much room as I'd like, you know, I'm, I can't make excuses. I just didn't do a great handstand. Um, but I asked him to like tear me up. I asked him to rip, like I wanted to like go on this podcast and have him like fucking challenge me with all of my beliefs. Because I love getting challenged and I love getting like, uh, like, I'm very comfortable going into the depths of my mind. And uh, he didn't roast me at all, man. He didn't roast me at all. He's like, why, why aren't you married? Like I'm. Get, I'm, I am. I'm getting married. So he's like, you tell me to quit my job and start a business. Well, you're all about commitment. Why don't you get married? And I was like, I am. And he's like, oh. And I was like, oh. But if anyone here uh, would like to criticize or tear me apart or roast me, I would love you and you will win this episode of Dream Grow Right. Who wants to win? Who wants money? Who wants me to Venmo money? I didn't do it last week when I was in Charlotte because, I don't know, I was, I forgot. And I was like, Shelby wanted to go to the pool. But, I'm here, I'm sticking around. Give me some questions, yo. I guess Brandon's gonna be the winner. <laughs> Keep them coming though. But like, it's funny, but me and Brandon already have been like talking today, so like, he's got something on his mind, he probably already said it. But, I'll be honest, when other people go live on Instagram, <laughs> does your wife monitor <laughs> your other All right, this guy might be the winner. Yeah. I asked him to ask a question and he asked one. That's pretty good one. Um, does my wife monitor my underwear? No, but she doesn't, no, like, but. Hey, that's a new thing. Yeah, you know, I like the question, like, um, if anything, like, yeah, that's the company would monitor on the underwear. Like, I'm trying to think of like if he's trying to imply something. Like, is there depth to that question? Like, is he saying like, yeah. is he saying like, are you your, are you like your wife's bitch? Like, Venmo. Okay, you need to do a little more to win. No, like, not yet. like ask, 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 dude. I will literally Venmo you money if you ask if you ask like another insightful you mean question. By no, not yet. Well, it's not till the end of the show. Uh -huh. But also, I don't know what he means. But I'm saying not yet because there's no winner officially until the show ends. But uh, I like where you're. I like where you're going. There's there's some funny things in there. Underwear is a funny thing because like butts are funny and farts are funny and like underwear is funny, right? And like you mentioned, my wife. Uh, so like, okay, no, she doesn't monogram my underwear. But what else you got? What else you got? Nico, what up, Nico? Someone just asked if my wife monogrammed my underwear, and I don't know. If that means something deeper than uh, what, he, what it means. But what, but what I was saying before that was uh, when I go on people's Instagram live and I see they're live on Instagram, I really uh, don't like tuning into them because it takes up your whole screen. So for everyone here, thanks for letting me take up your whole screen. Woo! I'm taking up your whole screen. You can't even check your text messages. You can't even go on YouTube. You only are watching me. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't think we should clip that out as a, a promotion for a drink and grow, right? <laughs> Do you see my question? Uh, if you ever got paid to wear a gold grill for a year, would you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But one thing I actually learned about Kanye at that event that I was at was his bottom teeth are all gold. Yeah. I, 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 I might have known that somewhere, but I never really knew that. Um, yeah, I mean... I don't know, probably not gold because it looks so silly. I mean, it depends how much you're gonna pay me, but uh, but like, yeah, but you're okay. Right, so, your question's about tattoos and like gold teeth. So, you're saying, like, what kind of crazy shit would I do to my face? <laughs> I don't know. This is like essentially my answer, like a pencil in my ear. Like, it's a crazy pencil in my ear. Looking too far into it. Just congrats on your wife's business. My wife's business? Damn. Oh, now you're coming at me hard saying that I don't deserve any of my success because someone else has done it for me and I'm just riding their coattails? Is that what you're saying? You're saying 
that I'm a failure. You hit the nerve. He must follow you if he knows shit about me. Well, that. he thinks that I don't deserve any of my own successes. So that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> he thinks it's your work. LOL, oh, haha, no. Just stick with it. Come on, rip on me. But, uh, well, I know what I do want to get. And if you are a follower of me and you see a shift in me one day, this is something I genuinely, uh, really, really want to do is I want to get veneers. Do you know what veneers are? I used to, but I forgot. <laughs> you ever seen Joe Biden smile? Yes. He has the most beautiful smile. Oh, fake teeth. It's, 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 it's I mean, elegant I, fake as teeth. somebody who's going to have them, I don't like calling them fake teeth. But it's fake teeth. It's elegant. Like. It's uh, it's like, it's like, it's like five grand a tooth, or something like that. Like it's really, it's it's very expensive, and I don't know all the details of it. But essentially, you pay some money, and you have a perfectly white, straight smile for the rest of your life, and it doesn't affect your eating or any like dentures. I don't know. That's for like old people or whatever. But you have to take them in and out. And that affects your lifestyle, you know? Like, that sucks. The thing about veneers is you have these perfect teeth and you and, and your lifestyle is not affected at all. Trump has them. Joe Biden has them. Uh, oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm Now that I'm thinking about it, like, Hillary has them. Like, if you pull up uh, a famous person and you look at their perfect smile, they probably have veneers. Like, veneers... It, the only way that you can know if they're veneers, the best way to know, is if you go back to old pictures of them and you notice that it's different. Uh, that's a good way to know. But... I don't think Obama had them. Obama, dude, Obama probably has them. His teeth are so... <laughs> he has the best smile ever. Like He's had the most amazing smile. He probably has them. And, like, I didn't mean to bring up all politicians right there, but I did. And, like, honestly, like... If I gotta see this president's face on TV every day, I don't. I want them to have them. Yeah. Like it just looks better. Like it actually. Like like Trump has an old, saggy face. Biden has a little saggy face. Like those teeth really help. <laughs> they, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm to imagine them without them. Yeah. It really helps them look better. Like imagine if uh, Trump. If Hillary didn't have it. <laughs> like I'm gonna Google her real quick. Like imagine if Trump had like yellow, like old man teeth. I don't even think I would have voted for him. <laughs> like. Like Hillary Clinton's smile. Like, I think if, I, if you gotta look at this person all the time. I'm trying to think of like ugly Hillary would look. Hillary Clinton's smile, I'm Googling it. Hillary Clinton's smile. I'm just gonna type in Hillary Clinton veneers. V E N E E R S. Huh? Oh. I don't know, man. I don't think she has them because. Uh, for everyone uh, watching. Does Hillary Clinton have veneers? Like... There's already conspiracy theories out. Oh, uh, look, uh... She's got a nice smile. But... This is basically like... This is like a perfect uh, Google image for veneers. Like this perfect smile. Like Joe Biden... Let's see if I, let's see if I can Google Joe Biden old teeth. Joe Biden before veneers. Joe Biden before veneers. This is hard hitting uh, journalism. <laughs> I mean, he's always been handsome. You know, one of the best things about uh, Joe Biden, like, just his branding is like, the show Parks and Rec, one of my favorite shows of all time. Love the show. Like, historic, amazing show. Um, those charisma points go up, yeah. Uh, he, he was, like, Leslie Nope's favorite person. And, like, he was, like, a god in that show. Like, she was obsessed with Joe Biden, and then she met Joe Biden one day. So it's just a cool way of, like, oh, how do I know that guy? Uh, I guess I have a positive connotation of him somehow. Like, a hit TV show, he was, like, the most famous person on it. But he was also vice president, so people already knew him. But yeah, charisma points definitely go up when you have a good smile. I got a decent smile, but it could be better, you know? And like also... Did you have braces as a kid? I had braces, yeah. And I never wore my retainer, so like 
you saw an underbite like this? And the brace is like, when you give me the overbite. And then uh, these two teeth right here, have like moved back a little because I haven't worn my retainer as, as religiously as I should. But uh, they were the better with veneers. And like, also I, I don't, I wonder what the brushing situation is with veneers. Like, do you have to brush your teeth? What if you didn't ever have to brush your teeth? <laughs> like, you still would maybe do mouthwash for like good breath and such. And like, the, the, gums, the, the yeah. sludge on your tongue, you don't want that. But like, I wonder, you probably still got a brush because, um, but that's cool. They're basically like your teeth because you still can brush, I think. I don't know, I gotta do some research on veneers, but. All right, Cooper, Cooper SC. Give me one more question and you're the winner. One more topic of conversation to discuss and I will absolutely pick you as the winner and Venmo you the money. Cooper. Coop. Is that anything, anything crazy doesn't have to be about business. It can be about anything in the world. But uh, this is your chance, this is your chance. If you don't ask me anything else, then Brandon wins. All right. If you're going to get into a podcasting, how would you start again? This I kind of just talked about this with uh, with Brady, but he doesn't know that. If you were going to get into podcasting, how would you start again? Well, I am just getting into podcasting, and I wouldn't do anything different because I don't have enough uh, time to look back and reflect to be like, oh, I should have done this differently or should have done this differently. And also, that's not the way to be. Like looking back at yourself and being like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done this. I'm proud of the fact that I started. And I'm proud of the fact that for 55 weeks, I've done it every single week. Some weeks it sucks. Some weeks I have to do it myself. Some weeks it was awesome. But the fact that I've done it 55 weeks in a row, I'm very proud of. And I don't have any regrets. I don't have any regrets at this point. Do I like pot pie? Fuck yeah. So good. Ch like chicken pot pie? So good. It's good for mentoring others. What's good for mentoring others? Podcasting? Yeah. And I, got, I feel like I got, a, I got a lot of shit to teach, but um, that's why I do this so people can ask me specific questions. Like, I wish someone there was like really struggling with their business and they had a question for me and I could help them and answer their very specific question. But uh, the funny part is about that is like, then you're a consultant. But the funny part is about that is I'm not looking for answers for any of my questions that I have. It's like, you can only ultimately answer your own questions and then you can listen to other people and take their wisdom and make it part of you. But nobody in the entire history of the universe has been in the exact same situation that you're in right now at this moment with your exact conditions. So... Nobody knows better than you, but, well, someone probably knows better than you, but the answer, if it's so simple that I can just answer it for you, that means it's also simple enough for you to just Google and figure out. So wisdom is, is something that can't apply to a specific situation, but wisdom is something that can sit inside of you that you gather that when situations, specific situations come up, you then apply it at that point. That's why wisdom is the most important thing. And that's why people should never stop learning. People should always continue to learn. And I really have felt for a while that like I'm at a point where I have nothing left to learn. And I mean wisdom type things because the things that I still have to learn are specifics. But I know that you have to keep pushing when you only have one person listening on Dream Girl Rich. And I know you have to keep rolling and I know you got to keep going. And I, I know I'm going to have a successful podcast. I know it's going to take time. And like I've, all I've known from the second I started that I'm going to have a successful business because you have to know it to make it happen. And I'm making it happen. And like also this strategy that I'm talking about of believing it is something that I've learned from the wisdom of learning from other people who have been successful. So it's just a big circle of knowledge. Agile life, continuous improvement, and learning. Yeah. And maybe that's the reason I'm so sick of Gary Vee is because 
he's talking about some very important things, but I've heard him say it a million times. I know it. I have it ingrained inside every cell of my body. And anytime a situation comes up where that important information needs to be applied, it's instantly applied from the inside of my soul. Therefore, I have no need to acquire it because it's acquired. And maybe some people don't have it acquired. And maybe I need to do a better job of talking about this basic stuff more. But maybe I'm just selfish. I don't know. But I don't have enough uh, people asking me these questions. If I had a bunch of people ask me the same question, I'd be like, all right, I need to make content about this question because people are asking it. And it's a very important thing going on right now. And then I would, if I have more people asking me questions, I would have more data to know what people want to hear from me. Do you think Gary Vee is just going at a subset of the market, like younger generation? God damn it, CJ. Are you just regurgitating shit that we just talked about like 20 <laughs> times? Sorry, I talked about that like four times in the past like two hours. And um, Gary Vee needs new shit. Let me ask you, Cooper, SC, uh, CJ Cooper SC. Do you think, I don't know, do you think that Gary Vee has lost it over the past six months. He just popped on. Fair enough. In your opinion, do you think Gary V has lost it in the past six months? Lost his edge? Lost his special sauce? Do you think that he has lost it in the past six months? I'm curious of your opinion on that. Kieran19. Hi! She said hi with like three eyes. How do you say hi with like five eyes out loud? Is it hi, hi or hi? Hi or hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I would have liked to talk about the uh, Redskins. Native Americans with uh, Mike Gaston. But I mean, there's two conversations there. That, oh, yeah. That's the thing I can talk about. I think that the, the, the Redskins, Washington Redskins, they renamed their team. One thing I think is interesting about it is they were pressured hard to change their name. And they didn't. And then something about now made them change it. But I do feel like it's the right move to change it. I do. And uh, their name is the Washington Football Team. The Washington Football Team. I fucking love that name. I think it's a great name. And uh, it's just so cool because it's like, who are you playing? Oh, we're playing the football team. Like, go football team. Go football team. You know how many, like, generic, like, banners you can bring to the party now? Because it's just football team. It's like, I love it. I genuinely, I'm not joking, I think it's a great branding name. The football team. It's, like, very classic. The football team. Who are we? We're the Washington football team. Like, I love it. I love it. I don't believe in everything he speaks, but respect where he's come from. You're sounding just as generic as him, buddy. Football, yeah. Brad Dog, you like the do you like the Redskins new name? We didn't talk about LeBron at all in the podcast. But uh like the College of Charleston, CFC. Do you is that where you go, by the way? CJ? Uh and people call them the college. I didn't know that. Do you know that people call College of Charleston the college? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just you. CJ Cooper SC. But uh yeah, you're probably the winner, but um, he said no. See, the, the time, I mean, the timing is of a. Uh, who is CJ Cooper talking about? There's like a five second delay. There's like a five second delay. So if you're saying no, it's like I'm sitting here by myself rambling on. So I don't know exactly what you're saying no to. But actually, Brad Dog, we asked CJ Cooper about if he thought that Gary V lost it in the past six months, like we have thought. And he said, he didn't really say anything. He just said, I like him, but I don't agree with everything. Man, LeBron didn't get to him, damn. See, like, I would have talked about LeBron on the podcast, but, like, I didn't know if you wanted to end it, and, like, it wasn't one of your things on your list. So, like, we could have spitballed about it. But, uh, they won last night. He technically had the game winner. He bricked it off the front of the rim and then caught it and, like, put it back up. And there was still, it wasn't a buzzer beater. So there's still 12 seconds left, but hey, they won. I think they're, I mean, they're the favorites to, to, to win the finals. 
Like I said many times before about LeBron, I cannot help it. I'm rooting for him. I want the Lakers to win the NBA Finals. Like, I should want the Sixers. Like, I just, I don't know. I want the Lakers. I don't know why. Yeah. Who do you want? Like, I was thinking this, like, because the Sixers could go to the Finals versus the Lakers. The Sixers are a good team. Versus the Lakers. And then, like, who would I root for? Like, Like, but you would never ask that about the Eagles, right? What? You would never, like... Consider rooting for another team besides the Eagles. Oh no, I think it's because LeBron is like. I'm a but like, fan. but you're a more hardcore Eagles fan than you are a Sixers fan. Yeah, I'm a Sixers fan. Right. So when you're not a hardcore fan, you just it's just like let's whoever is like the funnest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's more individual kind of in NBA. It, it, the you NBA support. is very individual. Yeah. It's very individual. And, and uh, the Eagles team that won the Super Bowl was like very. Non individual, yeah. The team, yeah. Who the was team. the star of that team? Foles, Nick Foles. I mean, he was the quarterback. Was he the star? Star, yeah. Like, yeah. there's 22 people that, that wasn't are, really a star. It was kind of like that's why old. there was like something special about that team. It was yeah. like, that's why, like, honestly, that is kind of relates back to the reason of why I like the name the Washington football team. It's like, where's the team? Where's the, where's the team? Like, the nickname might be like the team, where the, the team? team, like, where's the team, like. Like, Notre Dame is my uh, irrational love for my team that I love. I was raised to like them as a kid, and I love them. But I do like their 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 branding. They're the uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish, but, like, they just have the gold helmets and the blue jerseys. They're not, like, they're not flashy. They're very classic with college football, and I do yeah. like that. And I feel like the Redskins are now becoming that. Because their new jerseys are going to, uh, they said they're going to have the numbers on the helmet. So they're gonna have the numbers on the helmet and then just like maroon jerseys and just like gold pants. And they're just the football team. It's very like classic and like, <laughs> it's really cool. It's, I really, really like it. Keep up on the podcast, brother, great stuff. Thanks, man. It's all right. Would I listen to me? That's a good question. Would I listen to my own podcast? Probably not. I'd probably hate myself. Or I'd be obsessed with it. Or I wouldn't care because those are all my own thoughts, so I don't need to listen to it. I don't know. That's a weird question. All right, any of the new people that just came in? I was getting ready to rock, but uh, CJ Cooper SC is the is the winner as of right now. I'm going to Venmo him money for him to buy a six-pack of beer. But if anyone uh, can come in and ask a better question, they can win. How long ago did you start? What made you want to start it, brother? That question is not going to be the winning question because it's kind of boring. I started the podcast 55 weeks ago because I wanted to for fun and entertainment, and one day I would like to be famous, and I figured if I'm going to be a businessman, I should have my face recognized with uh, my opinions. And also, if I can become a robot one day, the only way I'm going to be able to be a robot is if you can take a lot of recordings of my voice and then create an, an artificial version of me. Therefore, I wanted to start a podcast, and that's why I did it, and that's how long I've been doing it. Boom, answer to your question. Jake Wills, one, two, three. It's one, two, three. Those are cool numbers. <laughs> They're the first three. What has been your favorite podcast and why? I still love that one podcast I did that was uh, like, Five tips on hiring. And maybe that's uh, the reason I like that podcast so much. Maybe it's telling me that I should do more specific topic content based ones. I don't know. My podcast recently has been having on guests and just shooting the shit and talking about stuff. And I like that. I mean, I have a lot of fun doing it. But Patrick Bet David was really cool. Uh, he's uh, very famous and especially in this world of entrepreneurship, which is like my podcast audience. And it was kind of unreal. It was like, Seeing me and him have a conversation, it was like out of this world type of feeling. So I've only done 55 episodes and if I'm gonna get to a thousand, one is not a lot. But that, that, that Patrick Beth David was my favorite, come on. It was fun, it was cool. And uh, I really liked it, I really liked it. That's been my favorite podcast. What have been some other ones that was like, like I really liked the first podcast I did with Julian, but my most recent podcast was my second one with Julian, 
And like, I liked it. It was good. But Mike I, Hart. Mike Hart. I, I should have him back on. Yeah. And like, I still feel like he's willing to talk about like anything. Yeah. And like, he might like, one of the things with him was, uh, I think he had a little bit of a time limit and he like didn't have a microphone. He was like, he was yeah. like, he was like, uh, bench pressing and then came over and just did this <laughs> podcast, you know, like yeah. he didn't really think much of it. And I think he had a good time and, uh, I would, and he, he'd be a good guy to have back on. Yeah. Let's get him maybe for after, uh, after, uh, after Bradley, I'm having Bradley on next and I'm having Adam Sosnick from, um, Valuetainment. And then I'm, it'd be cool to have my card after that. Yeah. And, uh, like, right off the top of your head, what would I talk with my card about? Like, we definitely would talk He's about, like, we would definitely talk about some marijuana stuff, because that's, like, his, that's I like his Twitter, he had tweets a lot of cool things. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty marijuana based. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's not, but it's not it. That's not it. Yeah. He's better with, like, uh, words, I think, than he is with, like, images. Because, like, his Instagram, he, like, he just, uh, like, puts his, on his story a picture of a blender and it says, like, hashtag greens. <laughs> He does it like every day, so it's like, okay, okay, greens are cool. <laughs> and they'll like put a picture of a bench press, and it's like, hashtag weightlifting. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what that is. That is a weight bench. But uh, but uh, a Twitter. I li- I think I'm better on Twitter than Instagram. I mean, without Brandon, I, like my Instagram would be weak. But uh, I I like words more than I like pictures. Yeah. Like. You know, uh, Shelby likes Instagram more because she's not as much of a word person as me. She's more of a visual, emotional. I love words. I love words. Well, I know, like, someone asked if I um, would watch my own podcast. And, like, sometimes I listen back to my podcast and I'm like, eh, that was okay. Or sometimes I hate my voice. But I know one thing I love. I love if I'm, if, I'm, if, I have my, if I'm watching my own podcast and I turn the volume down and I, and I can't hear what I'm saying. And I'm just watching myself talk. I'm always like, "All right, that looks good." <laughs> like I think, like I look good at talking. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Like, but if you actually break down what I'm saying, maybe it's not that insightful, and maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe good, my good delivery. Maybe my voice sounds bad, but like, when I'm just talking and there's no volume, but I'm talking clearly, I have to be saying something to be talking. But uh, I feel like I have good like facial emotions and like. I don't think I have a good voice. I really don't. And it's not the end of the world. What can you do? I wish I had like a amazing Morgan Freeman voice, whatever. But I'm working with what I got. But I do think I have good like, and, and, the, and the things that I say are very important. And it's obviously the most important things, the actual words that come out of my mouth. Uh, and that's important too. And I, I sometimes I think I have better things than others, what topics to cover, blah, blah, blah. That's one thing to look at. But then how I look when I'm talking when the volume's down, I think I'm, I, I think I'm like 10 out of 10 on that. I think I'm like, and like Brad, Brad Dog would probably be like a 1 out of 10 on that. <laughs> I don't know if he's listening or not, but it's the roast, no. Nah. But uh, bringing the energy and like the way your face looks when you're talking, how into it you are. Like, I think I'm good at that. I think I'm good at that. That's like, um, blah, 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 It's like, that is the part that looks good. Oh, shit, Brad Dog wants to come in. Oh, shit. Brad Dog! What's with, what's with another roast? Another roast, dude! Come on. I th- I- no, not not if you not if you're associated with me. No, you should talk to Shelby. She she can never live in peace. Uh, what? Well, yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, but, yeah, you gotta bring you gotta bring the energy. So man, all right, when's LeBron gonna lose in the playoffs? I think I think I think they're gonna win this year. You think you think no they you think they're gonna lose? I like how you're driving. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking awesome that you're driving right now. This is safe to do. Hopefully my wife isn't watching. So. Why? She'd probably get mad. So oh, mad. God. It, it's safe. You gotta get a Tesla, though. They drive themselves. I know. That'd be nice. It's so... It's, it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing, for sure. 
But uh, I hope some random like underdog team wins. Like uh, the Sixers. Yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. The Pelican? Oh, that would be... I mean, Zion. for Zion, yeah. Like, that, that's, it's funny that Brandon said, like, the NBA is individual, because we you think about the Pelicans winning, and it's just, like, Zion. But, uh... Yeah, totally. Underdog team would be cool. Underdog team would be... Would be, would be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Blazers? What if, what if the Blazers won? The boys, that's perfect. Yeah. Carmelo gets a ring. I think Carmelo is like one of the worst players ever. Like he's he's like he's worse than Russell Westbrook. Like he's just a ball hog, who just cares about scoring and does not care if they win. Like I mean, maybe Carmelo is, but what about Hoodie Mello? <laughs> Who's that? That's a different dude. I don't know Hoodie Mello. I know Marshmallow. Oh, Hoodie Mello. Did you Carmelo in a hoodie? <laughs> Lights out. Or it could be Marshmallow in a hoodie. Eating a caramel sauce. <laughs> Yo, when's your podcast coming out with me? August 12th. All right, because people just asked me like some stuff about Gary Vee and Kanye, and I was like, I don't want to talk about it again. I just talked about it. Did you this morning on uh, when you recorded? What? You were talking about them on the one you recorded this morning? No. No. But with you. But then, after I was talking about it with you... Oh, no. I was actually talking about it with Brandon this morning, yeah. off camera. No. And then with you. And then someone asked me on Dream Girl Rich. I'm like, God damn it. Like, But, you know, you gotta... you gotta Maybe maybe uh, take a lesson from Gary Vee and just happily repeat yourself over and 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 over. And that's basically over what I did. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, someone else on Dream Grow Rich, and there's not a lot of people on here, uh, said he, he thinks Gary Vee's losing it too. That going with Zero Dark Thirty, he said he's keeping the cell phone, the social media this playoff, so that's spilling bad news for the Lakers. Wait, he, he, he is going to keep it or he's going to hide it? He's going to put it away? He, he, he's keeping his phone because he wants to stay in contact with his family. So Ooh. Well, he usually turns phone. off Twitter. Man. That's cool, actually. I, I like... That's interesting. That's really interesting. And, like, it's funny that, like, you can't have your phone and not have Twitter. It's just, like, not a possibility. Like, you have to, you might, like, you're, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted to go on there. And imagine how fun it would be to, like, be famous and get, be able to turn your phone on and get a million different opinions of, like, what just happened to you. You're clearly engaged in my one opinion. Imagine if you had a million people talking to you about, like, your shit. I could handle it. Like the life of inside the bubble. I saw J.R. Smith that live on Instagram, and like they were all like. Apparently, they put him in like one of the nicer hotels in Disney, right? But the NBA has been covering like any of their hotel expenses. Well, the hotels they are, but not like room service. Like how much? How much for a six pack of Coke? Somebody said it was like twenty something dollars. Damn. And like the e the easy response would be like, oh sorry, you with your five hundred thousand dollar minimum contracts in the NBA. Yeah. But like they're real people and like they're like twenty six dollars for Coke? They have no yeah, they have no choice. <laughs> so they're just like ass raping them for money. <laughs> That's actually funny as shit. And I guess, like, <laughs> it's so funny. And they, they set up, like, this fishing spot for him, but apparently all the fish are already gone. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, we got you pizza. That'll be that'll be $90. And, like, are you, oh, yeah. are you fucking serious? That's what they're saying. <laughs> Yo, that's really that's funny. So that's really funny. And, like, they, they do have the money. It's not like they're, like... You know, they have the money, so, like, they're, but they're just, like, a regular, like, 28-year-old guy, like, oh, fuck, $90 for one pizza? Like, dude, yeah, I mean, man. god damn it. Like, this is going to add up. <laughs> I never heard that, but that's hilarious. They can't, they can't order food off, like, the dinner list until after 5 p.m., and there's, like, this certain, like, window that they have to order from, and... 
that's funny. That's they're just they're just taking advantage of the fact that obviously we're the only place you can get food. So like, we're just gonna yeah. fucking do whatever we want. Oh, and uh, it's a, it's a total monopoly. that's so funny. And my boy, uh, my boy Hecker said uh, the hardest thing for LeBron to do is stop tweeting because he needs the attention. <laughs> me and him, me and him always talk about LeBron, and he actually listened to our original podcast, uh, the one on my show. And he like he's like I like that guy I like that guy because uh, he hates LeBron just like you. Thanks, yeah, he hates LeBron just like you, and I'm always like, in the, like I see your guys' points, but I kind of like him. So, uh. man, I, I love LeBron on the court, but yeah, I don't know. No, I mean he, he's he's that's why I'm so interested in the Space Jam thing because how is he going to portray his legacy throughout time? Well, he, I wouldn't be surprised if he fucked it up, but we'll see. I don't know. But I guess that probably got delayed because of the coronavirus and shit. They might. I mean, they're probably the favorite, I would say. Yeah. All right, bro. Cool, man. Thanks All right. For I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk shit on you instantly after you're gone. All right, cool. I'll, I'll listen in. All right, later. All right, cool. Bye. Oh, my God. I can't get rid of that guy. He smells like shit. He's ugly. And I hate him. Just kidding, Brad. Brad, Brad Dog, Brad, your name should be Brady Dog Media, not Brad Dog. Remember, I actually remember when I when I early started podcasting, there was like a few people I connected with. It was Brady, and then it was uh, these other two guys. They were called the Bullish Entrepreneur, and uh, I actually was supposed to go on their podcast, and, we had a, and, I, and I thought it was the next day, and I missed it, and they were so pissed. They did, They only did like three episodes. They never hung around. But one time I was chatting with them and they and they called and, and Brady did something with them, like a podcast, and they called him uh Brad. They're like, hey Brad, what do you think about this? And I, and I commented and I was like, his name's Brady, by the way, not Brad. <laughs> and the guy got so fucking pissed at me because like I just missed the podcast, and then I was talking shit about him, calling him Brady the wrong name. And then like he quit after two weeks because he just had enough of me. But it's so funny. Uh, in high school, I got the nickname Mad Dog Brad Dog, so it's based off that. Cool. They were butthurt about you. Oh, no, I know, man. They were really butthurt about me, and the, and I feel terrible because I genuinely made a mistake. And it was a weird, like, wording mistake about, like, I, I said tomorrow, but I meant, to, like, we had a podcast scheduled. It was my fault. I missed the podcast. And I felt terrible. I was so excited to do the podcast. I would I I just messed up. I just made a mistake. And and I felt terrible. But what what do I do when I feel terrible? I instantly am like, well, what can I do about it? Like and uh I think they think that like I was like trying to be more of a dick to them. So they started treating me like shit. And then I was like, all right, well, fuck you. I'll treat you guys like shit. And I like, I like controversy anyway. So it's funny. They must have talked to you like off camera or something, but those dudes were pissed. And I know what's funny about them? They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. So people with weak emotions aren't the same people who can make it. This just in. You have to have a strong emotional core to be successful in anything that you ever partake in. And maybe, see, it's funny. When I say stuff like that, I roll my eyes. And I say like, oh, but there's a bunch of people out there that might not know that. And those may be the people that like Gary Vee's get it better at getting to than me because I know that so much. You need to be strong emotionally and not be negatively affected when people say negative things about you. And when they do, it's going to hurt. But it also hurts when you do a bench press. And the more you bench press, the stronger your muscles get. The more negative comments you get and the more you get used to them, the more that you can deal with it. And that is just basic for me. I love negative comments. They, they make me warm the insides of my soul. And it's because if somebody has said something bad about me, I will get mad if I haven't already thought about it myself. It's very rare do I hear something that like, I have a wall up and I'm scared to talk about it. Like I'll talk about anything. I have no walls. I have no hidden thoughts. I have no, and if I do, I want someone else to bring it up to me, preferably on camera so I can get embarrassed and like 
That and that approach makes me indestructible. I'm indestructible. You cannot ever destruct me. So it's kind of turns out to be a good thing. Who's the winner? Probably Cooper SC. Yeah, he seems legit. Alright. Hey! Guys, fellas, ladies, buddies. This has been fun. We'll do it again next week. And maybe I'll have veneers by then. <laughs> Peace out. And I'll DM you, Cooper. Later.